Ja, hi, der Jan hier von Music and Stuff und wir sind heute auf der Annihilator Tour mit Mastermind Jeff Waters, der uns mal ein bisschen was über sein Equipment erzählen wird und vielleicht auch noch ein bisschen mehr. Hi yeah. Jeff, so how much of, the, of my German did you understand? All of it. We're here with uh, Music and Stuff and we're going to do a rig rundown, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Good guess. Yeah. So uh, what's, what are the main parts of, uh, of your rig? I guess you well, have guess, some special guitars. Well, it starts with the fingers. No. Anyway. <laughs> really? uh, Jim Dunlop picks. I've been using these, I guess they're Jim Dunlop one millimeter nylon, black nylon, old school picks that you find in music stores. Maybe you still see them. I don't think they make them. They, they have new max grips. But I've been using these and I can't get away from them. No matter what pick I try, I always go back to this. Just habit, I guess. But um, yeah, this actually, this is a prototype I'm using tonight of Our, my new signature model with Epiphone. Um, we had the Epiphone Annihilation many, many years ago, maybe four years, five years ago, a long time, and it did very well, and um, it was time to make another one. And uh, we decided to, like this one has a, a Floyd Rose, a new type of Floyd Rose FRX uh, tremolo system on it. Okay. But it's for, it's I don't think it's gonna come out on the, the final Annihilation 2. It's called okay. the Annihilation 2. Um, I think we'll do one without the bar and maybe a special edition someday with the, with the bar, maybe later next year or something. But for now, it's without the bar that we, we are doing. And it's pretty cool. I, um, uh, the, the artwork will be on the, on the normal model? I'm not sure. Oh, this will be, yeah. Everything's yeah. the same on the normal model except normal bridge. Okay. Uh, also and, the, and no the locking. Normal tuners, yeah. yeah. So, and actually the concept was pretty interesting because, um, you know, the last guitar we did, the Annihilation by Epiphone, um, it sold very well because it was a lower price guitar, but it was a medium quality. It wasn't, uh, you know, it was a quality of like an 800 euro guitar, but it was sold for 500 euro, something like that. Um, the idea of this, uh, for this new guitar, was again the opposite of what you would think. Most artists, musicians, guitar players would want a better guitar, more expensive, and you know, <laughs> really, really incredible top of the line. And we decided again to let's even go farther down in price. So the point of this is, is to make it even more affordable, but try to keep the quality the same as the last guitar if we can do it. And I think we've done it. Um, again, this one has the tremolo, but the neck is better than the other one. And the, the funny thing is, if you see the back, the neck is a bolt-on. Yeah. It's not a one-piece neck through. The original Annihilation guitar was one piece, no bolt-on. So this was very important to me because, of course, there are a lot of guitars with the, the two-piece necks that are not good. Um, so there are a lot of guitars with the bolts in history that are amazing. So I wanted to make this a good one. And this brought down the price, but we got the neck right. And it's, uh, I don't know, I'm just very proud that we could make the guitar down in price, but the quality is still the same. Yeah, I prefer uh, bolt-on guitars because they have this Feel. special uh, attack yes. sound. Yeah, and especially with the neck, sometimes the very expensive guitars that I have in my guitar collection, um, I like playing the cheaper ones because they have more of the, the live fretboard messy Angus Young, Eddie Van Halen solo sound style. Okay. Uh, whereas the, the perfect necks with the guitars that cost 3,000 or 5,000 euro, sometimes they're, they're really not very <laughs> nice to play. I like the, the ugly, dirty, metal, live sound of these things. Yeah. And which pickups are you using? These, well, on the original Annihilation guitar, we had, I had Gibson make pickups for the original one. This new model, the Annihilation 2, um, to save the cost, we went and just went with Epiphone pickups. But we went with a pickup that was um, able to do leads but rhythms at the same level. And it's hard to find that. So they spent a lot of time on these pickups to make them just as good. And, and I know everybody says this, but these are better than the Gibsons that we had in the other model. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't have uh, you know, said yes yeah. to, to the guitar. And these are two volumes? Um, This is a kill switch. Oh, a kill switch. No, but you're okay. right, it is um, treble. Yeah. Tone control. Uh, and then you've got the single coil, which okay. I never use, but some people like that. Uh, and then this, remember we had this little tiny kill switch on the old model, the Annihilation, and now we built that into this, and it goes faster, so you can make yeah. it sound like a machine gun with this. But was it hard for you to, to get used, using a knob instead of a switch? For this? Yeah. No, because I only use it maybe uh, 
a song called Never Neverland, I use it duh, 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 seven, six times, <laughs> and then at the end of some songs. So I really don't really use it that much. Okay. Uh, but it's good to have for me. Um, it's a fun toy. You can make, if you do a big guitar solo with a lot of noise, you can make some really cool sounds with that. <laughs> it's just extra things that, that people like extra things. And if you can throw it in and put it in, and it doesn't cost any more, or it doesn't affect the tone or make, make it worse or something, then, then we tried to throw them in there for, for other people. But ex example, I, I could live without that. It's fun. And this one I never use. But yeah. they said put it in because some people will like it. Okay. And which tuning are you, use on this, are you using on this tour? <laughs> now that I'm singing, <laughs> I dropped the tuning down. Uh, normally we had two tunings. That was normal E440. And then we would also, oh, I'm sweating. Whew. <laughs> it's stressful working with these guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm just kidding. It's, it's okay. actually the lights that they put on. Um, normally 440, and then we would drop the, the low string to a D. So I guess they call it drop D. Now what we did is the same tuning, but half step down, uh, one fret down in tuning. The same two type of tunings. Just easier to sing. Plus for me, there's been a lot of good singers in Annihilator, so they're much better at me at hitting the high notes. So when I bring the tuning down just a little bit, it helps me be able to yeah. do it. But is it, is it easy for you to play guitar and sing at the same time? No. no. <laughs> it, it is. Now it's starting to get much easier. At the beginning of the tour and in the summer when we did festivals, I thought I, I wasn't sure if I could do it. I was very not, not confident. And because, you know, you're singing one thing and your fingers are doing something different. And I started worrying that maybe I, I took on too much, uh, 49 years old, now being a singer and playing guitar. Now that we're 20, 25 shows into the tour, it's, I, I literally wake up uh, and the only thing I worry about is, is my throat and nose okay from the, the, the air, the cold air on the bus. Yeah. Or if it's cold and raining outside, will I get sick? Because I was sick last week. Um, but when it comes to that, now I just run on stage and I have a fun time and I, I pretend I have, I pretend I'm really good. It gives, <laughs> it gives you confidence and when you're confident then you do better at yeah. it, right? I know I'm not great but I'm starting to get good at it now <laughs> and I'm enjoying that. Okay, and I've seen uh, you're using a Shure wireless system. Yeah. Out of the guitar. No endorsement, I just bought it with my own money. Um, hmm. I tried different wireless systems and uh, I actually, I think I was endorsed by Sure many years ago, but then I went to another company after that. So when I came back to them last year and said, hey, would you like to do endorsement? They say, nope, <laughs> because you already were with us and you left us. So I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm still going to buy your, your wireless stuff because it's really good. Um, the other guys, the bass player and uh, Rich and the guitar player Aaron, they use line six, and that's what I was using before. But now that I'm singing, I've got the, no, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a Sure wireless. <laughs> That's your iPhone or whatever. What is it? Yeah, it's uh, an iPhone. iPhone, yeah. Um, what am I using? Yeah, I guess I'm using the Shure packs and uh, I'm using a Shure in-ear uh, monitor system. Sorry, I goofed that. Wait. On the guitar, I'm using Shure wireless systems and I'm also using the in-ears uh, by Shure as well. So everything's Shure. Have you used the, the in-ear before you started to sing again? Never, no. Nope. Never. Uh, this is the first time, but I knew I had to do it because I, uh, in the studio, I can hear very well. I mix a lot of CDs and I think I have very good hearing. But when I play live, the, the difference between the, the volume of the guitar note, the pitch, with the, the volume of the singing, I can never get that right. So sometimes I'm singing in a totally different key. Yeah. And that's very strange for me. So I went, you can't see it, but you can look at it later. At the bottom of the wireless rack, there's a, a Behringer X32, and it's mm. like a mixer. And we run all the instruments through that, and that goes to my earphones, so I hear the band. And the, the cool thing is, I actually hear it, when we're playing on stage, even if the sound is not so good in the venue, I hear it like it's a CD. Yeah. It's very clear and really nice. So then, I can get the right level of the guitar with the singing, and I can hit the notes. Yeah. So as soon as I got that system, then I could, get better yeah so you, you you're doing your monitoring yourself yeah okay just because you know what you need yeah and it's uh, once you set it, it it's almost the exact same every night now 
people were telling me this for more than 10 years, that Jeff, you need to go and do this, get in your systems. And I'm like, ah, old school, I don't need it, I don't need it. But now that I'm singing, I need it. Yes. So you are used to it now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I started to love it. A lot of people said it might take you weeks and many, many, many shows before you get used to it. And I'm like, fuck, it sounds perfect. So it's like <laughs> listening to a record. If everybody plays good, it sounds like an album. Yeah, okay, and then when you go to a old school thrash metal show, you would expect some huge amp stacks. But yeah. Well, who knows, who knows. Can you zoom in on what I'm using or yeah. what? Yeah, sure. What do we got? Can you see it? You got it? You're good? There's not much to see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's not much to see. It's very simple. I wanted to get an amplifier that I could fit in a suitcase and take to all the festivals in the summer and all the South American tours in Japan and wherever we go. It had to be um, rugged. It had to be able to be dropped and go through the, the airport system, luggage system. And it had to have clean sound, dirty sound. I needed uh, a delay. I needed a noise gate. I um, mean, all these things, if you use a Marshall or an EVH or any of those great amplifiers, then I had to buy another rack with the, the decimator gates and I had to buy a delay and a compressor for the clean sound and, and all these different things I need. Uh, but they're all built into the amplifier. So this was the perfect amp for us so far and I think I've been using it for many years now, like three or four years. And it's loud, it looks small, but it's very loud. It's very reliable. We've only had one amplifier break on the tour and we have six of them. Um, and it was just because uh, I think it got dropped. <laughs> the yeah. tube broke. Okay. But no, it's, it's very simple. We just, I just have a clean sound, a dirty sound, like means rhythm, and then a, a solo sound, and then uh, I have a whammy bar sound. I can't play it for you, but it's like when you're doing these things. <laughs> trying to make some noise, that's, that's what that sounds. So really, there's only three sounds. So um, are you using uh, internal effects besides the noise gate? Yeah, it, the gate and I'm using a bit of reverb and chorus or delay on solos and things like that. Um, but essentially that's it and there's one effect that I put on the front of the amplifier and it's I only use it for one song, half of one song. The song's uh, called Suicide Society, it's the title track to our new record. And it's just like a, a boss, uh, I think it's called a multi-overtone pedal. It's just an octaver with a little bit of uh, weird tuning in it. But it's just an octaver, so that, that's pretty well it. I'm just using that effect, out, that external effect, just for the song Suicide Society. But the rest I can just do in the amp. It's very easy to set this up because you just literally turn it on. You can save it to a laptop. You can, you can change it with software like many amps. But this one is just so easy to use. It's uh, incredible. Yeah, and I've seen uh, you're using an Shure SM57. Yeah, always. Yeah, I mean, Soundman always try to get you to use different microphones, but uh, that one always works for me since the beginning. And it's be I used the 57 because I remember Max Norman, who was the uh, Max Norman was the engineer for uh, Randy Rhodes for Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman, and Megadeth and Black Sabbath and uh, so many great guitar players and sounds. And you know Judas Priest, Iron Maiden used 57s. Pantera, of course, later in the later years, Terry Date would use a 57 on, on Dime Soul. So all these great guitar players way back in the 70s and 80s, metal players were using 57s. So I said, why would you use a different microphone? I mean, that's the one that ever. All our albums that we like as heavy metal players, all of our records are done with 57s. Yeah. So why not use it? But are you mixing it with the uh, red box out on the back of the amp? No, 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 we didn't use that, no. Just So it's just mono signal and that's all you need? Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, maybe Sorry. you can show us now uh, your little effects section and your switcher. Sure. Pedal board stuff? Yeah. Very simple. Okay. Okay, I'll walk over. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. It's just the standard Houston Kettner pedal board. And of course, you could see my labeled sounds. Clean, drive, which I think drive means rhythm. Lead is solos. And this one, for some reason, says blammo. I think blammo is just a, uh, what is it? That's my, when I just do a solo at the very end of the set. It's just noise, whammy bar, like. You can't really hear it, but it has a lot of delay and a lot of effects on it. It's just an extra channel to have fun with. And that's it. And, I have this uh, Shure, again, Shure tuner, 
which is great. It's also a wireless system. So that's where my uh, guitar wireless is, right there, instead of in the back. The Shure wireless system is here, and when you, when you press it on or off, it's a tuner. So it's the coolest thing I can talk to, uh, talk to the crowd and tune the guitar at the same time. And it mutes it, so when I'm finished tuning, let me just turn it on, it's ready to go again. And there's the Boss multi-overtone I was telling you about. It's got that... Uh, so that's a pretty simple effect. I use that for a song, Suicide Society, done. In other words, it's pretty boring with me because it's just one amp and one extra pedal yeah. and wireless. But as I said before, maybe the fingers are the most important thing. True. So if you have some... Yeah, you still have, you still have, there's some bands like, you know, ACDC or something where they use wizard amps. I mean, you see the Marshalls, but they, you know, they don't have this huge rack with all these different effects and everything. They just plug right into it yeah. and go. Uh, and that's, that's amazing idea. I like that, not having too many things in there. But now when you're playing some different venues, some of the venues have grounding problems, power problems, and you need these noise gates and you need these things to stop the noise, right? Um, and of course you need a wireless. And it's, it, this pedal by sure is good because instead of putting it in a rack, it's right at your feet. So the signal from the guitar to the pedal is, is really close. No problems with that. Plus the tuner. Are you using any special cables between the pedals <coughs> and the amp? No, I mean, normally I'd use Mogami cabling. I always, in my studio at home, I use Mogami on everything, but uh, I think all those cables are pretty good. Yeah, they are. I think they're all Mogami. Yeah. And, and then the last piece yeah. is in there. Can you show us your sure. in-ear monitoring sure. system? Uh, simple. We trigger the drum kicks. This is not a guitar thing, but we trigger the drum tricks. Tricks? Tricks? Kicks. <laughs> with an old uh, D5. I used to have this, this uh, Elisis D5 trigger unit, have it in my studio in 1996, back in Vancouver. So I, I still kept it in, in the garage. And when yeah. Mike, our drummer, came to rehearse, I said, let's just try this. So we used the old speed metal drum, just for the kick drum, so that the kick drum sound good. But that's the, I guess this is it. I got my wireless, of course, my Sure wireless uh, transmitter for the in-ear monitors here with a little simple, you know, not the big antennas, we just use the little one. And that's the uh, magic one, the Behringer X32. It's, uh, it's I mean, may, many companies make mixers, but this thing is so easy to use, so easy to save things and change things while you're playing even. I come over sometimes and adjust things. Yeah. Um, it's just like a full-on studio mixing board in the rack, so. But if you know how to use it, it's so easy and yeah. simple. Have you tried to use it or to, to dial in tones with uh, the iPad? So you could put yeah. an iPad on... Well, with this one, um, actually, I'm using... I got Grandmeister, so I can, I can use the Grandmeister. I can change my amp settings from here and save them. Okay. And this is the software for the uh, X2, so I just save it on there. I just get it right here, and then I just save it on the software. So that's basically the same thing. It's just saving it. But, of course, you can move and change things from here, too. So It's very handy technology. I don't really use uh, anything too complicated, but yeah. it's... And you, you only have two guitars with you on a tour? <sighs> Three, I think. I think I got a Les Paul hidden somewhere over there, and two, I've got this prototype Epiphone mm -hmm. Annihilation 2, and I have the original Epiphone Annihilation. So I've got just three. If we break one, we have so many friends here that we can, uh, <laughs> a Gibson and Epiphone in Germany that can send us another guitar, so we just take two each. Like I have three. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for this little oh, rundown. Ernie ball strings. Can't forget Ernie ball strings. Okay. Which size are you using, or which? Well, now that we're half step down, I think it's 10 to 48. Okay. And that's it. Just because you're that's used it. to it. Well, we found that the uh, when I went half a step, half a, or one fret down in the tuning, it's just a small amount, but it, it made the strings too too uh, loose. Yeah. So we tried to go a little heavier on the gauge and it worked good. But would you say it affected your sound? It sounds yeah, it's a little, little bit good. weird sometimes, like songs set the world on fire. Uh, there's some songs where I wish it was back to the normal tuning, but I can sing it when it's down yeah. half step. And it's just one little note difference, but it makes a big difference on the sound. There's about three songs that I wish were up more, like the original, but uh, then I couldn't sing it. <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, thank you very much for this little rig rundown. Thank you very much. And yeah, we're looking forward to the show tonight. Yeah, it should be fun. Yes, it will be fun. <laughs> yeah, be nice and hot thank in here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great. Thank you.